Hey guys, it's John from John's DIY Playground. Today I'm going to take you over to my sump pit in my basement. And here in Michigan, a lot of houses have sump pits. They're basically holes in the ground underneath your basement floor that help collect uh, water when it rains out and pumps the water outside the house. Um, so what I have down there is an electronic sensor instead of a float switch. Nothing about that on today's video, but what I wanted to talk about was this piece here that I made. It's a sump pit monitor, and the way it works is it's an ultrasonic sensor facing downwards and measuring the levels of the water. Now I put the sensor inside of this plastic gutter so it would help isolate the sound so there'd be less interference and noise. We'll get into that in a minute. Here's a view of the sensor close up. It's on a plastic bracket that I just hot glued to inside the gutter. Here's a view of the mounting. I put one screw into the side of the sump pump pit and I drilled a hole in the gutter here just so I could get a screwdriver in there and drive that screw into the wall of the sump pit right there. The sensor itself is pre-bought. It's in on Amazon. They're about three dollars a piece and it hooks to this Wi-Fi sensor here which is the brains and sends it over to my home automation system. So I get a signal about every 20 seconds from this sensor and I'll show you what it looks like on my home automation system because we had to do some magic with filtering the data because what happens is it starts getting different tolerances in the measurement of where the water level is. So it might be 47 centimeters one minute, next minute it's 46, then it's 47 again. And we're trying to count how many cycles per minute this thing's going off. So let's go upstairs and have a look. Here's what it looks like when the pump kicks on. Let me speed the video up until it actually starts. And that's it, that's considered one cycle. So I use Home Assistant as my um, home automation system and I'm using this ESP Home plugin uh, or add-on, whatever you want to call it, to control my little nodes. So I program this node with really simple code. All it takes to make the ultrasonic sensor work is to drop in this code here. And as you can see, I'm posting data every 20 seconds and I'm calling the name of the sensor Sump Pit Water. Um, the pins need to be configured also for which one's the trigger and which one's the echo. There's also a power wire and a ground wire and that's all you really need to hook up to the node and then upload this code to it and then you're in business. So the problem is I'm about to show you is with the data itself, with the data itself. So when I go in here and I look at my data, I can see this is the raw data. There's actually points where the data is kind of like call it noisy where it's moving up and down when really the reading should just be constant so I need to smooth that out so what I did is I applied a filter and the filter data is plotted here you can see how much more smooth the data is and reliable so what I do is I set up the filters and then what I want to do is I want to count the number of cycles this thing's running per day so I look at yesterday's count 103 cycles that's one on and off cycle and then for today so far it's been 79 cycles. Now the way I do that is in your configuration.yaml file. So if I come over to the configurator here we can have a quick look. So this is a section of my configuration.yaml that does all the magic. First I have a binary sensor down here and it's looking to create the sump pit value. I want to know if the sump pit is what I consider below the point where it's going to turn on or it's off which is below that certain point and my threshold is 0 0.44 meters. 0 0.44 if you remember back on the graph was kind of halfway between the peak and the trough of the data. So then the other way I'm doing this to get that smooth line is I use something called the so this particular filter I'm using an outlier filter and a low pass filter with these values. Now get those two history graphs that you saw I have a stat um, that I call for sump cycles today and it looks like this and uses the um, clock from basically from time zero midnight until now it counts the number of times it sees on 
And then for the cycles for yesterday, it's very similar except the template shows that from midnight and going back 24 hours, that's how I get yesterday's count. So, so that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and remember to hit the subscribe button so you're notified when new videos of mine come out. This is John from John's DIY Playground. Have a great day.